All right, all the files have um, compressed for me from After Effects. I can get rid of the XMP files that I don't need. You'll see they're the tiniest files there. So here's the files that are left. And here's one thing that I noticed here with the MPEG. Um, this is the M2V and the WAV file. Those are actually, they go together. That's the um, final DVD file. I guess I just didn't choose the multiplex. And that's not a big deal for them to be unmultiplexed because it's often that you see them as two separate files. But let's take a look at these files. I want to move them over into the output folder so they go into the After Effects output folder. And we can compare them with the files that are in the other folder, such as let's take a look at, I'm going to go ahead and delete this WAV file for right now because I'm not too concerned with them with that. Um, but just do be aware that this would be 13, 14, 15 something megs or so. And if we take a look, the one from Adobe Media Encoder was like 18 megs, and this one would have been 15 something megs. Um, the, H, the FLV is 3200K, whereas here it was 3000K. So the question is, is there a difference? And sometimes we can only tell that by writing the files. So let's take a look at this one DVD file. This is out of the Adobe Media Encoder. And if I take a look at it, you can definitely see the ghosting of the two images. But from After Effects, the same file, if I take a look at it, um, you'll notice that um, it didn't do a very good job of um, getting rid of these black bars on the outside. So when I just scaled it, um, using the uh, let's see the settings in here when I when I changed the output module and I, I said to go ahead and stretch it you'll notice it didn't do a great job so that shows me that it might even be better sometimes to go ahead and create a file which is the size that you need and import that in here such as if I did my NTSC widescreen 15 seconds I've got everything set there now I can drag that comp into here and we'll see if it fits a little bit better. And there it, indeed it does. If I scale it all the way down to the size there, you'll see it gives me the black bars on the left and the right. And that doesn't really work. So it actually has to be scaled up just a little bit um, so that it um, gets rid of those things. And the scale here, oh, it's like 44 or something. And that's about right. Well, no. 46, somewhere about that, 45. So it definitely looks like 46 or so is the right size to go to, to get rid of those um, borders on the two sides. Now, one thing that you can do is just fit it to the frame, and that is Control, Alt, and F. And that way it fits right to the frame, and nobody's ever really going to tell that it's been squished that little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. But it's definitely better if you um, put this in a comp and then actually um, save it out from that comp in the settings that you need, the MPEG or whatever it is. And also, we could make a small comp, the 360, or the 640 rather, 640 by 360. We would do a square pixel. Um, we change our frame rate to 30 because we want full 30 frames. Click OK and then we drag that file into that size and then fit it to the frame with the control alt and um, f and you'll see that will maybe even give us a little bit better quality if we have any problems like this where it didn't get the black bars but one thing that we do notice is that we do not have fields here so there's a nice thing between adobe media encoder and this other version is that we are not getting fields that are output when we save out our DVD file. So for the other files, you might want to check the quality. We've got fields there out of After Effects with our WMV. We don't have fields. So that's definitely better. We definitely want no fields on our output for, um, for uh, desktop video. So that concludes the After Effects stuff. Please save your After Effects project file and um, submit it with your assignment, and we'll go on to the next one.